Section 15 of Lives of the Ancient Philosophers. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Lives of the Ancient Philosophers by Francois Fenelon. Section 15. Anaxagoras. Anaxagoras, born in the 70th Olympiad, died in the 88th, aged 72 years. Anaxagoras, the son of Hegesibulus, was much more deeply skilled in natural philosophy than any of his predecessors. He was a native of Clazomene, a city in Ionia, and was descended from a family as illustrious for its origin as for its wealth. He flourished in the 76th Olympiad. He was a disciple of Anaximenes, who had been a scholar of Anaximander, who was himself taught by Thales, acknowledged by the Greeks as chief among their sages. Anaxagoras was so fascinated with the study of philosophy that he renounced all other pursuits, either of a public or domestic nature, in order to devote himself exclusively to it and even relinquished all that he possessed lest he should be diverted from it by solicitude for his private interests in vain his friends remonstrated with him that he would ruin his patrimony by his contempt of money he was bent on the investigation of truth and determined to make that his sole pursuit he left his country to prosecute its search in consequence of this he was reproached as having no regard for his native country on the contrary he replied i love it pointing to the sky above all things he went to live at athens and transferred thither the ionic school which had been established at miletus by thales the founder of the sect and had remained there until that time at the age of twenty he began to teach philosophy in the city of athens and continued to do so for thirty years one day a weather with a single horn growing out of the middle of its forehead was brought to the house of pericles lampa the augur as soon as he saw it pronounced that this peculiarity signified that the two factions into which athens was then split would unite and concentrate their power anaxagoras said that it was occasioned by the brain not filling the cranium which was hollow and which terminated in a sort of point at that part of the skull where the horn commenced he then opened the head of the weather in the presence of a great number of spectators and on examination the case was found to be exactly as he had stated it this incident gained great credit to anaxagoras and not less to the augur for shortly after the faction of thucydides was crushed and the affairs of the state rested with pericles alone anaxagoras is supposed to have been the first among the greeks who presented a system of philosophy to the world he admitted infinity as his first principle and a supreme intelligence for the arrangement of matter and the composition of all created things for this reason it was that he was distinguished among his contemporaries by the epithet of mind he did not believe that this intelligence had called matter out of nothing but only that it had arranged it in the beginning said he all things were mingled together and remained in one confused mass until a superior intelligence separated and disposed them as we now see them ovid has very beautifully expressed this sentiment in the beginning of his metamorphoses anaxagoras acknowledged no other divinity than this intelligence by which the world was framed and in such contempt did he hold the false gods which were the objects of worship to all profane antiquity that lucian feigns him to have been destroyed by jupiter with a thunderbolt for the scorn which he had evinced towards him and all the other deities he maintained that there was no void in nature that everything was full and that every particle of matter however small it might appear was capable of infinite division so that could an agent be found subtle enough to divide it into a sufficient number of parts 
the foot of a flesh worm might be spread over a hundred thousand millions of heavens and still the part that should remain undivided would be inexhaustible as it would still remain susceptible to infinite division he believed all bodies to be formed of small homogeneous particles that for example blood was composed simply of minute particles of blood water of small particles of water and so of other things it was this similitude of parts that he called homoimeria laertius has endeavored to oppose his system by the following futile arguments it was objected to anaxagoras that bodies must necessarily be composed of heterogeneous particles since the bones of animals grew without their eating bones and their nerves grew yet they never ate nerves and that their blood increased though they never drank any blood anaxagoras answered that in point of fact there was not a substance in the world composed entirely of homogeneous particles that in herbs for instance there must be flesh blood bones and nerves since we find that animals are nourished by feeding on them but that each body derives its name from the substance which predominates in its composition that for instance in the bodies which we term wood or herbs it sufficed that they should consist of a greater number of particles of wood or herbs than of anything else and that they should be thickly distributed on the surface of the respective bodies he believed the sun to be only a mass of hot iron larger than the whole peloponnesus that the moon was an opaque and habitable body and that it contained mountains and valleys the same as are in the world in which we live that comets were clusters of planets which were brought together by accident and separated again in the course of time that the winds were caused by the heat of the sun rarefying the air that thunder was occasioned by the collision of the clouds and lightning by their simply coming in contact one with another that earthquakes were produced by air being pent up in subterranean caverns and that the overflowing of the nile might be readily accounted for from the periodical melting of the snows of ethiopia which formed torrents that at last discharged themselves towards the sources of that river the motion of the stars he attributed to the air and on the retreat and return of the stars between the tropics being objected to this he replied that even that was caused by the pressure of the air which propelled and repelled the stars as if by a spring when they arrived at a certain point he imagined the earth to be a plain that as it was the weightiest of all the elements it occupied the lowest place in the universe and that the waters which flow on its surface being rarefied by the heat of the sun are converted into vapors and rise into the middle regions of the air whence they descend in rain the white track which appears in the sky in the form of a circle in a clear night and which we call the milky way was supposed by many of the ancients to be the path through which the inferior deities went to attend the councils of the mighty jupiter others again imagined it to be the place where the souls of heroes hovered about after the destruction of their bodies on this subject the notions of anaxagoras were not more enlightened than those of other philosophers he supposed it to be only the reflection of the sun which appears thus because there is no luminous body between the milky way and the earth to eclipse this reflected light he held that animals were originally produced by heat and moisture and that the several species were afterwards continued by procreation it happened one day that a stone fell from the sky anaxagoras immediately concluded from the circumstance that the sky was formed of stones that the rapid movements of the celestial vault held it in a state of solidity and that if this motion should be checked for a single moment the whole fabric of the world would give way in an instant he once foretold that a stone would fall from the sun and his prediction was verified a stone fell near the river agos 
anaxagoras supposed that what was at that time dry land might one day become sea and that sea might in the same manner become dry land he carried this opinion so far that being asked if he believed that the sea would ever overflow the mountains of lampsicus yes he replied if time itself do not fail he placed the supreme good in the investigation of the mysteries of nature insomuch that when he was asked what he conceived to be the object of his coming into the world he replied to contemplate the heavens the sun the moon and all the other wonders of nature being asked what description of men he considered to be the happiest none of those he replied who are generally regarded as such happiness is only to be found in those situations which are commonly deemed most miserable hearing a man one day lamenting that he must die in a foreign land of what consequence is it said he is there any land that does not afford a passage to another world a message being brought to him with an account of his son's death he heard the tidings without any emotion i knew very well said he that i had only begotten a mortal and he went immediately to see about the funeral himself anaxagoras did not long enjoy his reputation at athens he was impeached by the citizens and publicly denounced before the magistrates various grounds have been assigned for his accusation the opinion most generally received is that he was accused of impiety for having dared to assert that the sun which was adored as a god was nothing more than a body of heated iron others say that in addition to the crime of impiety he was accused of treason when he heard that the athenians had condemned him to death he received the intelligence with the utmost calmness in no very long time said he nature will pronounce the same sentence against themselves pericles who had been one of his disciples took his part on this occasion so zealously that he procured a mitigation of his sentence it was commuted to a fine of five talents and banishment anaxagoras supported his disgrace with equanimity he availed himself of his banishment to travel into egypt and other countries in order to converse with the most ingenious philosophers and make himself acquainted with foreign manners after satisfying his curiosity he returned to his native place clazomene where he found all his affairs in disorder and his property gone to waste had my fortunes remained prosperous said he it is i that would have been ruined anaxagoras had taken particular pains in the instruction of pericles and had been of great assistance to him in the administration of public affairs pericles was not however so grateful to his master as he ought to have been and it has been said that at the last he treated him with neglect seeing himself old indigent and forsaken anaxagoras wrapped himself up in his cloak and resolved to abandon himself to death by hunger pericles heard of it and was extremely afflicted he went with all speed in quest of him and implored him to change his resolution lamenting the misfortune of the state in losing so great a man and his own in being deprived of so faithful an adviser anaxagoras uncovered his face and throwing on him the last looks of his dying eyes o oh, pericles he exclaimed those who require a lamp ought to be careful to supply it with oil it is related by laertius that anaxagoras expired at lampsicus and that when he was at the point of death the principal persons in the city asked him if there was anything he wished to order in request he desired that the anniversary of his death might be granted as a holiday every year to the children of the city in order that they might commemorate it by their innocent sports and the custom was accordingly observed for a long time afterwards anaxagoras was seventy-two years of age at the time of his death
which took place in the 88th Olympiad. End of section 15